What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, we've been working on different farms recently. We just set up the Wither Skeleton Farm. We got the whole room set up. We have all of our drawers over here collecting things. So, things that I've done off camera, as you can see, it's spawning quite quickly now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I went ahead and I added in a 20 speed upgrade. So, it's going the maximum speed it can possibly go right now which is really awesome. Uh, another thing I forgot about these types of spawners, as you saw, there was a Wither Skeleton that spawned on top and he was kind of hanging out there for a while. Yeah, the Restirbed Spawners are what these are called. Uh, if you see all the monsters are like a weird black color, like all monsters that are spawned from them, like the witches in the overworld are kind of spawned and they just kind of look like a black texture. Uh, yeah, so those monsters, they will only hang out for 30 seconds. If they don't die in 30 seconds, they just despawn, right? So even though... You know, some are spawning up there every now and then. It's not that big of a deal. They're not going to hang out there for forever. They will eventually just despawn and free up another space for more monsters to spawn, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, I went ahead and I added the void upgrades to all of these different drawers here. I added a compacting drawer here with the void upgrade. This has a lot of space. We'll get a lot of blocks of coal out of this thing. But, yeah, I just definitely want to make sure we're not going to fill up and overflow. Um, also, down below, I added in... Uh, another item conduit here with a advanced item filter. So we're filtering out on all these different types of armor that we have been getting off these monsters. Uh, have it set so it's ignoring NBT and the metadata. So if any of these are enchanted or whatever, they got full health, it'll still get filtered through there. Uh, this one over here, we have osmium armor and steel armor plus bow and a sword. Again, NBT and metadata is ignored. So yeah, all of those are being filtered through. So that takes care of a vast majority of all the different junk items that we're getting from these monsters here. Now we are still getting some other things. As you can see here, we're getting chain boots and golden boots, but we're getting those very, very infrequently compared to those other types of armor. So we can let this go for a little while, but it is definitely something I'll have to keep in mind. We'll probably have to add another filter for these different things. Although I do believe you can combine these repair them all the way and then smelt them down for gold so we might want to do that later i don't know another thing i've noticed here we have coal in this chest even though coal is set up to over here we also had i think some uh, withered ribs some experience bones and arrows and other such things uh in this chest it feels like when i load and unload the world like the filters don't work correctly. It doesn't know that it can send things to the trash can. And those kinds of items just kind of like appear here. I'm not really sure why that happens, but I've noticed that at the witch farm too, that uh, when we're, when I load back in the world, I check on, we got some of those items that should be filtered into the drawers, not filtered into the drawers. So yeah, that's kind of a, just a little bit of an issue, but yeah, anyway, so Wither Skeleton Farm is going really good. We have currently, uh 157 wither skeleton skulls which is pretty awesome oh you know what another thing uh this wither dust this stuff here i was taking a look at this uh let's take a look at the uses of it yeah the wither dust we can use that to make wither dust block which is like okay so what does that do requires a piece of steel and eat wither dust but yeah the wither dust block if we go to the description here it says a compact block of wither dust it will not be blown up by withers, also decorative. <laughs> so yes, we have a decent way to get ourselves a room, or I guess a way to make a room out of witherproof blocks. I didn't know those were a thing before. I do want to take a few stacks of those with me back to the overworld. I guess I'll just drop off one of those. Yeah, we can turn these into witherproof blocks, and that way I don't have to keep repairing the cobblestone area down below the base. <laughs> <laughs> every time we spawn in a wither because that's kind of eh, it works but it's not the best way of fighting the wither boss right anyway uh so yeah we could make ourselves a room i suppose out of this stuff right and put it practically anywhere eventually we'll want to get ourselves uh the draconic evolution mob grinder to kill the wither boss instantly but for right now uh having a wither proof room like this is gonna be really nice do we even have any steel we do we got some. So that'll get us eight. It'll be 16. And four. Yeah, you know, 32. That might be enough for what I'm trying to do right now. We might need to make more. But let's just go ahead and do this. Um, okay, I guess we had a little bit more wither dust in the system. We got 37 of those. So 
Does that act like sand? Well, if it feels like sand, maybe it feels like dirt is what it is. Uh, so those say they will not be blown up by the wither boss. Yeah, that's definitely something that I'd like to do is <laughs> set up some kind of a thing like that down here at the very bottom of the world where we've been fighting the wither bosses. Yeah, if we could make a small room out of witherproof stuff, maybe only make it so there's an opening right here and make the whole box out of that and spawn a wither boss in there. I think that's going to be really awesome. So I tell you guys what, let me go ahead and try and make a witherproof room out of this stuff and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I made a three by three room full of this wither dust block. Yeah, three by three hollow on the inside, I guess I should say. Um, I didn't fill in the corners. Yeah, I know that if we spawn in a wither boss and explodes, the explosion will kind of go through the corners and destroy some of the stuff back here. But until I test this stuff and make sure this will actually contain a wither boss, yeah, I don't really want to mess with that too much just yet. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a wither boss. We'll test this together. We'll just go and place the uh, this whole thing in like so. I guess I can turn on my night vision, make it easier to see a little bit. There, place one here, place one here. I have a potion of strength and a potion of regeneration. We have full uh, power on our armor, so we should be good to go here. Let's go ahead and place this thing down. Hopefully that does not cause a problem. I'll go ahead and take the strength now and the regeneration. But yeah, I want to see... Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, 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 okay. So yes, this does contain the Wither Boss. Whoa, except the Wither Boss's head is in the ceiling now. All right, cool. So yes, that does pretty much exactly what I was hoping it would do. So the Wither Boss can't get through this, but as you see here, it did explode some of this and some of this on the outside. I bet through the corners here, remove some blocks. We'll have to, yeah, <laughs> if I hold, the magnet had collected some of those blocks in the corners. So I'll fill in all the corners here, make this thing. So the only explosion that'll happen is out this way. And I can make the tunnel just a little bit bigger, full of the uh, withered dust block here. So none of these blocks get removed. But yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty well. Yeah, definitely a lot nicer than having to fill in holes all the time. Every time I come down here. All right. Yeah, so there's two blocks. Okay. <laughs> That must be one of those creepers that exploded or whatever. So there's two blocks extra that got blown up in, from one of these corners. But anyway, yeah, I think that's going to be really good. So that's not that expensive. That's essentially one piece of steel per block, which is really, really cheap uh, since we have all of the withered dust. Yeah, we have so much of it just being voided out right now. So that's not an issue at all. So I really like that. Okay. So now that we're able to get wither stars pretty easily, or I guess nether stars pretty easily off the wither bosses, we can start looking at using those things for some other purposes. All right, guys, so I'm just at the end of fighting a whole lot of these wither bosses. Now, there's some things that I learned about doing this. Uh, one, I had the room too small. Yep. Uh, so the room I had originally three by three by three on the inside, and I noticed that the wither boss was kind of floating through the ceiling a little bit. I didn't really think much of it until it seemed like he kind of was escaping out of there. Thankfully, he never got away. Um, so, yeah, I made the room four blocks tall on the inside, and that hasn't happened yet. But another thing I have noticed, though, uh, the Wither Boss does explode this piece of cobblestone right here every now and then. I have to keep replacing it. But there's, like, a lot more cobblestone that I'm picking up from elsewhere. So I think he is, or she, whatever the boss is, <laughs> is, uh, you know... The explosion that it does is not being contained by the wither dust block, but it is keeping the boss in here. Um, so if I grab my magnet, we're going to pick up. No, it doesn't look like we're picking up anything else. I expect if we remove the ceiling. Yeah. So even though it's keeping the boss in here, it is still exploding out there and yeah, still causing a little bit of destruction. I assume that's going to happen on the walls and stuff as well, but I guess it'll be just fine. We're not going to worry too much about it. Eventually this will be completely automated. So yeah, I just got done killing 20 of these guys. Another thing is I made all these potions <laughs> to try and, you know, prevent me from dying as I'm killing that many wither bosses. But then, yeah, I, I realized since we have a four blocks on the inside, the wither boss kind of floats up and every time it's trying to shoot at me, it misses. So I didn't really need my regeneration at all. The strength helps a little bit, but this also is eight minutes in length. So I only had to take like two of those anyway. We now have a lot of Wither Boss, or I guess Nether Stars, 
that we can use for other things. Um, yeah, so we want to put away these potions and stuff. So there's nether stars we we're going to start using towards making a, uh, a quarry, right? We wanted to make the quarry card and we had to have all this draconic stuff. And each one of these draconic things required another star and it requires a draconium ingots, right? So we need a lot of draconium. Uh, yeah, for each one of those. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of stuff and we don't really have that much. Whoop, draconium. So we have 14 in total, right? Uh, I think we got some of that from killing the dragon, did we? Or maybe I just got this stuff from destroying some of the draconium infused ores that I've seen in the nether, maybe in the end a little bit. We really need to go farm some of this stuff. And we haven't done that yet because we still have not made a jetpack <laughs> at all in this series. Um, I guess we could probably fly around a little bit in the end with our current glider and staff of teleportation setup that we have here staff of traveling um yeah that might be i really don't know the meteors in the end like how far apart they are so i guess we could go do a little bit of exploring and go check that out uh yeah we need to get our hunger going again anyway not having to use the potions all the time for fighting the wither bosses that was really nice i wasn't expecting that we would get away with it that easy but apparently we did also, how's my armor doing? Probably could use a little bit of a recharge, just a little bit. Yeah, I think we're good there. Okay, so I guess the next thing we need to do, we can drop off our levels and we can head to the end, see if we can find any of the comets, the meteors or whatever, that contain the draconium, and then we will look at how to smelt that stuff. So yep, yeah, I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so here we are in the end, and I'm just collecting a few of these ender pearls from these plants that have fully grown they're just natural spun here i've been looking around the island and i haven't seen any draconium just kind of like generated in the world so that might be disabled i'm not entirely sure uh, i did take a look at the configuration file for draconic evolution it seems like the meteor chance the comet chance is one in ten thousand which i believe is the default so that means out of every ten thousand chunks one of those will have a comet that spawned in it yeah, so it's not exceptionally common. Yeah, anyway, uh, so we need to go, well, at least the best thing I can think of right now, if we're going to avoid getting ourselves a jetpack just yet, which we might have to just go ahead and make one, uh, we're just going to go ahead and use this portal here, throw an ender pearl through, through there, it warps us over to the end island. Now, uh, I guess the uh, end city islands. We were here once before, and there so happened to be one of these things real close. So we didn't really have to go very far for anything. So we can just kind of explore around the island a little bit. Hopefully we'll see a comet that's formed around here. Uh, it's still kind of unlikely. 10,000 chunks is a huge area. That's 10,000 times 16. That's so many blocks <laughs> of space between each comet. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk around these islands a little bit, see if we can find anything here. The mini maps now just kind of filling in with all the stuff. I'm hoping that I'll just see a comet on the mini map is essentially what I would like to do. Uh, I'll probably fly out to these little islands or I guess glide out there a little bit, see if we can get any additional stuff to spawn in. But yeah, I'm going to kind of walk around for a little bit, see if we can find a, a comet very easily and then we'll be back guys. All right, guys, so I've just been walking around this one island here. Yep, this is, well, that is our starting island. We warped over here. I've just been kind of walking around the island. And over there in the distance, sure enough, there is a comet right there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so, yeah, that didn't really take long. I was kind of expecting I'd have to jump to a few different islands before we'd eventually find one. Uh, let's see. Let's kind of get over here a little bit better. I wanted that rendered on the mini-map. Also, there's another end city here, which is kind of cool, I suppose. But yeah, let's warp up here, I guess, use our staff of traveling up here. So yeah, there is plenty of draconium ore in this thing. Uh, that's going to be really, really awesome for us to collect. I guess I will just start by collecting it. So yeah, we got 11 there. We can also mine up some obsidian, which will be kind of nice too. I see there's a bee, so I feel like there's going to be one of the end hives here, which is potentially a problem because those hives... Uh, yeah, they do like direct damage to you. Yeah, there's a hive right there. Okay, so I gotta be careful about that. Uh, yeah, if I'm not, <laughs> like I said, they do direct damage. 
And I think they can do like three or four hearts worth of damage at a time. Definitely not, definitely not something you want to have happen uh, <laughs> very often anyway. So yeah, I'll go ahead and collect a lot of this stuff here. We'll have plenty of the draconium and then we'll have to figure out how we're going to get that melted down into the draconium ingots. Anyway, I'll continue mining here and we'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, so I ended up with a whole lot of obsidian, which is really nice. So, yeah, as I was breaking the draconium ore that was surrounded by obsidian, it was breaking all the surrounding obsidian around it, which was really nice. So I didn't have to sit there and wait, like, forever for the obsidian. Yeah, <laughs> the draconium ore didn't take that long to break, so it's pretty nice to farm that at the same time. So we have all of that stuff, and then also in my pouch here, I've collected more. <laughs> we were just running out of room. I had to put it somewhere. So yeah, we have even more draconium dust. So now we have quite a lot of this stuff, which is really good. It looks like exactly 1,024, which is kind of unusual. Um, okay, anyway, so we have that much draconium. So we need to start taking this stuff and converting it into ingots. So the uses of this... Uh, so if we had the tier 5 blood altar, we've seen this before, we can convert it directly into the draconium ingot. We haven't even touched blood magic at all. So we're just going to go ahead and scratch this one off the list for now. So a metal alloy, or this is our other way of doing it. So we're going to need blaze quartz, night slime ingots, corrupted essence, uh, mist chemical dust, psi gem, which I think is a diamond, right? Yeah, diamond put through a greater infusion trick. I'll have to figure out if we're going to be able to do that. Yeah, we haven't even messed with any of this. Looks like we do need a Psy Metal CAD assembly in order to do that. Okay, so that might be an issue. And then I'll take two Draconium and turn it into one ingot. So yeah, we'll probably do this just to get the initial amount of Draconium going that we need. And then eventually we'll get into Blood Magic and, you know, be able to get that stuff way easier. Um, so yeah, I guess the next thing we should do... Let's go back to uses here. Uh, side gem, night slime. We've seen that before. This mist chemical. Let's take a look at the actually the recipe for that. So we need the ingots through the crusher to get this stuff. Uh, the recipe for the ingot itself looks like we are going to need a bunch of these other things. Oh, man. I don't know if we have all these different things. I guess we'll have to take a look at that. So this is called mist mist. Misc metal. Misc metal. This stuff right here. So yeah, I'll keep that recipe right there. So let's go and take a look and see what we have in our supply over here in our rock counting stuff. I know we got a lot of these things, but I don't know if we have all of them. Uh, those are the raw stuff. These are the process things. So there's some cerium dust. What else do we need here? So we need four of that, man. We're not going to be able to do very many of these. But then again, that gives us nine per recipe. All right, so then we need lanthium. Uh, yeah, looks like we got some of that. Okay, so that's nice. What else do we need? Neodymium. I don't know how to pronounce these words. So we have three of those. Uh, okay, the one that starts with a P. We only have one of these. So right there, that's going to be a huge bottleneck. We're going to have to figure out how to get some more of this stuff so we can do this recipe a few more times. Uh, iron is easy, and then that's it. Okay, so we need this stuff. So the recipe says made in a chemical extractor, uh, but doesn't say how we get these metals. Whoa, what just... Why did I just take... Oh, <laughs> one of these golems over here. That happens all the time. These guys can shoot from such a ways away, and there is no sound with their shot, so I'll take damage. I'm just like, where did I take damage from? Yeah, golem. Okay, so I'll have to figure out how to get some more of this stuff right here. We need at least two more of these. Uh, so, yeah, let me go ahead and start getting to work on that, and then we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I was figuring out how to get to the specific material that we needed here, this praseodium, however you pronounce it. I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking for this, so I searched for that in JEI, right? And then it came up with this one right here. This is... Uh, some of the different things that we get after processing ores through rock hounding, right? So uh, so we have this. If I click on it, it says that this comes from the silicate material or silicate mineral, I'm sorry. Right. So what we need to do is process some of these uninspected minerals into the silicate stuff. So we have that going right now, and I don't 
think, yeah, we got some silica right here, actually. Uh, so I kind of switched these things around a little bit. We're now using item conduits, and they're set to in out on both ends with extract always active on both ends. So what this is going to do is that we put crushing gears in here, and this crushing gear runs out. It'll pull a new one out and put it into here. It's also putting in the uninspected mineral from this chest, and then all of the resulting items get extracted and put back down into here. So that kind of makes things a little bit nicer in my opinion. Uh, I've done the same thing on these other machines. We have a mineral analyzer here. This is where we put the silicate material in. Let's grab this stuff. Min the silicate mineral, I keep saying that wrong. So if I put this in here, it'll get extracted out, put into the machine, it'll do its thing. This has test tubes that need to be replaced. So same kind of a deal. We have extra test tubes down here. As it uses the items, the test tubes go back in here as it processes the items those come back out here so this is some of those shards that we we're looking for right here we have nine of them we might get some more as these finish up uh, again same kind of a thing over here test tube that needs to be replaced so we have extras down here so we can stick those in here this gets put into the machine it'll process them out we're looking for this pr substance right here so as it processes those each of these little bars go up right so test tubes gone now just replace it with a new one and the machine keeps operating, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so we only get 6% of that stuff per per item being processed. So we need quite a lot of that in order to get each and every individual one of these different materials. So as you can see here, I have one more, but we are about eh, two-thirds of the way to our next one. So yeah, we need more of that silicate ma mineral. If we get any more of that, that'll be really good. Got to keep looking <laughs> at these different things. Uh, so as I'm waiting, I'm also taking some of the other ones and just running it through the machine so we get these uh, raw ores that will eventually need to be processed. Also, I did uh, add in some ender fluid conduits here. So the ender fluid conduit does not have an internal inventory. It's kind of like point A to point B. So if any place needs a specific fluid, it'll fill that up. So yeah, we have that set up. So all three of these different machines are making the hydrofluoric, the sulfuric, and the hydrochloric, <laughs> those are all being ejected into our mineral analyzer here. Previously, I was doing all of this by hand, just taking a bucket out of here, putting it into here, and keeping watch on this. I don't, I'm not doing that anymore. Also, the sulfuric acid I have through pressurized fluid conduit going to our lab ovens that require that stuff right here uh, for the hydrochloric and, of course, for the hydrofluoric. Uh, over here, we have our other lab oven that has syngas that is required for this chemical extractor hydrofluoric and syngas so those are all connected here we're getting the hydrofluoric from one of these machines plus the syngas from here and those are being inserted down here so yes all of the different fluids are now being pretty much automated uh we could hook this up to applied energistics and i would like to do that eventually and get this 100 percent automated like getting our sodium chloride compound the sulfur and our fluoride bearing stuff all automated this also requires a carbon stuff. I can't remember what it's called. If we look up syngas, you can find it, but it's essentially coal in the um, the flasks or whatever. So it's pretty easy to do. And we now have a lot of coal being generated. So yeah, very, very easy. But anyway, I'm gonna continue working on this for a little bit. I wanna try and get some more of this dust. Yep, and then we can look at trying to make our first piece of draconium. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I've been babysitting this for a little while, just kind of making sure that we're getting all the different ores that we need, making sure we have enough of all the stuff that we need to make those things. Yeah, and just kind of filling up extra test tubes and so on and so forth. So I put a lot of our different shards over here so it'll get processed into our different dusts eventually. Yeah, this is just kind of happening automatically. It is kind of a slow process, so it's better that we just kind of do it all now and not have to worry about it later. Should have done a little bit more with this since the last time we messed with it, but I just haven't had a need to. Every time we needed one of our different ores, we've already had something available. But yeah, now we're kind of getting to the point where we need to get more of the stuff going. So anyway, we have a lot of the stuff now to make these different things. So let's put this, 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 and this in here. That should go ahead and turn it into the misc metal or uh, misc chemical. I don't know. However you pronounce that. It looks like it's miscellaneous metal ingot, but I don't know if that's how you correctly pronounce that. So yes, now we are finally getting this stuff, which is pretty cool. So we can get rid of that last section here. All right, so the draconium ingots, to uh, continue on with that, we do need to crush these down into a dust. 
And if we do crush them down to a dust, we can smelt them back into a regular ingot, which is pretty cool. So I'll just go ahead and take all these and we'll crush those down and get some dust out of them. Can't think of anything else that we're going to need this stuff for at the moment. So let's, whoop, let's just go ahead and get these done in bulk. Uh, we'll throw those into the crusher here. And there we go. Yeah, we're getting the dust now, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's step away from the crusher since it is kind of a loud machine. So what else do we need to get this going? Uh, so we need night slime. We've made this stuff before a little bit. The molten night slime that is with molten iron, liquid purple slime, and seared stone. So all of those things we can make. I'll go ahead and have to make some of that stuff off camera just so we have extra of that. The blaze quartz, that is regular nether quartz surrounded by blaze powder. That shouldn't be a big deal. We can farm blaze rods pretty easily if we don't have any. The corrupted essence, we did see this before. We had to make this stuff in order to get into the soul shards mod. Uh, looks like for each ingot, we're going to need a corrupted essence. So this is going to get pretty expensive because that is an emerald purr. But now that we have those villagers, we should be able to get that fairly easily. The side dust we made previously with redstone and our iron cat assembly into that. We just click it on the ground. Uh, so the side gem here, this is something else we're going to have to look at. So in order to do this, we need a side metal cat assembly and a diamond. The diamond's not that big of a deal, but we are going to have to get a trick in order to make this. And to get the side metal cad, we're going to need side metal ingot, which requires us to have gold in our iron cad. So we already have this. We need gold and we also need trick infusion. So for any of these tricks, if I remember correctly, we're going to need something called a spell programmer. Uh, let's go over here. Yeah, the spell programmer. So we're going to need these ingots. We've made these before in the past. Uh, titanium, gold, silver, copper. It's not super difficult. We're going to need advanced machine casing, the soldering iron. So we need, to, we need to use our carpenter with some bronze and some iron. I think that is pretty simple for us to do right now. Let's take a look. I know we have a carpenter over here and it already has biomass in there. So that is kind of a problem. I think we can bucket that stuff out and then we can reset this recipe. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to need this stuff at the moment. Let's see. Can we bucket that out? Yeah, it looks like we can. So I could make a drum or a container to put this stuff in, or I could just throw it right here in the world. We're probably going to end up doing that because we haven't really been using the carpenter for much at the moment other than uh, making this camouflage stuff. So, yeah, we're going to need a bucket of water. We can throw that in there. We're going to need, was it three iron and one bronze? So grab three iron and a bronze. Okay, cool. So let's go back over to our machine area. Carpenter. This, this, this. And one of those, yes. And then we'll go ahead and make ourselves a soldering iron. Now the soldering iron is also an item that we can use to make upgrades for our centrifuge. We can take these empty, empty sockets, fill them full of a different type of a, uh, I can't remember what those are called, some kind of a microchip. And then we can also use the soldering iron to install different upgrades to make the machines go faster or use less power or whatever. So yeah, we'll have to make another one of these. In fact, I should probably just do that now. I'll leave the recipe here uh, in order to do that off camera. All right, so is there anything else we need to look at real quick while we are here? Yeah, the side gem, the side metal, spell programmer, right. So the spell programmer requires iron rod, so that's pretty easy. Two iron gives us four. And then we're going to need the advanced machine casing, which does take a little bit of time, but it is definitely something that is doable. But guys, I think we're going to, I think we are pretty much out of time for today. Unfortunately, Oop, come on, click it, click it. Yeah, I think we're out of time for today. We got a lot of good stuff done, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, we're going to have to wait on getting the rest of this done until next time. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.